and welcome to my kitchen. Today, we're not going to be cooking anything, but we're going to be doing an unboxing, which is kind of like having Christmas in your house without paying for it. So that's why I like that. Um, so some of you may be familiar already with Rancho Gordo, but it's um, Steve Sando has an heirloom bean company and he actually does some really great work with Mexican farmers to keep some of these heirloom beans alive. And if you're not sure what heirloom beans are, <laughs> if we go all the way back to that, or heirloom vegetables, or why some of those are important, it's that those are the things that grow, that if you save the seed from it, it will be, um, it will grow exactly like its parent did. So a lot of things, aren't GMO, but are cross-pollinated. So, which means if I get this kind of pepper and I save the seeds, if I grow it, it's not gonna be like the parent one. So heirloom beans used to be the way almost all our food was grown. And um, we had a much more diverse foodscape. So that's why heirloom is kind of important. And I love the work that Steve has done and thinks he's pretty awesome. I even have a little crush on him, but it's okay. <laughs> I just think what the work that he does and the beans that he does, and I'm going to show you some cool stuff. So, um, and hey, Marilyn and um, Jackie, I'm so glad to see you guys. And Gina, Gina, you did not miss yesterday, but Miss Kathy here decided that teaching a two and a half hour live class counted as my vlog mistake. <laughs> I was, I had full intentions of doing this unboxing yesterday and I laid down after my incredibly intense air fryer fun class. That was a lot of fun. And I took a two hour nap. So I was pretty much just done from then. So Gina, I'm sorry about that. Um, I th and next Saturday, I'm going to go ahead and say next Saturday, I'm not going to do a live since I'm doing a live class. But if you want to show up in the class, I'd be glad to have you. Let's see. Oh, wow. We got lots of people today. So let me start with this again. So does everybody know what heirloom means when you're talking about an heirloom tomato or heirloom beans? And I'll, sorry for those of you who are here. But basically it means that when you get seeds from that plant, it's gonna produce the same kind of plant. So when we cross pollinate things like, so lots of tomatoes, and we've heard about it more with tomatoes. Some heirloom tomatoes are delicious, but they are not super hardy or they don't travel well because you know, we truck tomatoes all around places. Um, so sometimes that's the reason that we've ended up with some of these cross-pollinated varieties. But saving the heirloom varieties is really important um, in case they're, they're actually, I found out about this, I forget where it is, it's somewhere like in one of the very, very cold countries, they have like a seed vault. So in case anything ever happens, and it would be heirloom seeds that they would have. So that's kind of cool. Oh, wow, lots of people. Hi. And if, if I say Facebook user, it means you're probably in a group and I don't see your name. So if you're coming from vegan cooking, um, vegan recipes, cooking with Kathy Hester Facebook group, which if you're not in, I encourage you to come join our happy community. Um, or if you're coming from Kathy's Cooking Club or somewhere else, please go ahead and put your name in so I can greet you properly. So, and... Kat says hi and send my love. Oh, thank you so much, Kat's Vegan Kitchen. And Fran, uh, just got into the club in time for the fourth quarter box. And you guys don't even know, uh, most of you, how exciting that is. So for the quarterly Rancho Be Gordo Bean Club, there's like a two-year, like 10, it's, it's in the thousands of people waiting list. So to get on, I've been in for several years. And so I'm not just showing you this to taunt you. You can still buy beans separately at Rancho Gordo. And this way you can kind of see some of the experience you might miss out on. Um, and Uncertain Boyd says hello. And Gina loves Rancho Gordo. I Yeah, I just love, it's very kitschy. Some of the, um, some of the graphics they use for their promotions and they've got some cool things. I'm pretty sure my calendar's in this one. And I have some from the third quarter box that I just unpacked 
to show you. And I got one prize that made me squeal. Um, and Diane says she's watching it while drinking her Instant Pot Atole. Yay! And she made the air fryer French toast this morning. Excellent. We slept in. So we still have that French toast for tomorrow. <laughs> we, so, um, and I think this is on healthyslowcooking.com. And if you look up at the top menu, if you go there, there's, it'll be slow cooker recipes, instant pot recipes, air fryer recipes. And I'm pretty sure it's like an, we make a nutty oat coating to go on the bread and put it in the air fryer. If you don't have an air fryer, you could totally use your oven. Um, good evening, Brandy. I haven't seen you in a while. I hope you're doing well. Um, and I, I see, hi, darling. I'm going to say, I think that's Mia. <laughs> that's going to be my guess. And tell me if I'm wrong. And Carol just got her first Rancho Gordo um, Bean Club box. And she was waitlisted since the very beginning of the pandemic. That's awesome. They must have really upped it to add so many people who've just been on the waiting list for a year. That's amazing. Okay. And hi, Diane. Oh, and Fran said she heard 11,000 people on the waiting list. They did something on CBS Sunday morning with Steve about Rancho Gordo. Um, and Gina said some of the beans are reminiscent of chocolate, and she loves their hominy. And if there's always something good. And you know what's really amazing, too, is their popcorn. I love their popcorn. Um and the beans we made last week, the refried beans, those were also Rancho Gordo beans. And we just made a simple um, refried, not refried bean in the Instant Pot using some ancho and aguajillo chilies. So if you want to watch that, that's going to be on YouTube or wherever you're watching now. If you scroll, you'll find the video. Um, and Joanne says her Wi-Fi is crashing. She'll watch the replay. It's good to see you as always. Okay. So, a couple of things. Um, oh, wait. Oh, great. Thank you, Brand Brandy's actually put the French toast link in there. So if you want to make that yummy, nutty French toast, you've got an end now. So some of you already know, and a lot of you already have the Great Vegan Bean Book, which is, I think it was my second cookbook a very long time ago. And there's some cool bean recipes in there. And include, this is one I'm going to be making soon. It's a, actually, let's let this come up. Better, worse, worse, better. A New Year's soup with black-eyed peas. And so it's got like rice and collards and stuff like that. It's really yummy. So I might make that coming up soon. But um, you can get this at Amazon if that's something you're interested in. And this is, I did open it a little bit, but I haven't taken all the things out. But I love their little picture of the, their um, logo has like the kind of older lady, you know, not older lady. I'm not saying this right at all. Kind of like cool, kitschy lady. That's what I mean. She's probably younger than me, so I'm not trying to call her an old lady. And then there's also, and these beans, we'll look at these. These are from the um, third quarter box. So these actually make really good red beans and rice. And you can get these little red beans also at the Hispanic market. One thing that's really good about these versus using kidney beans or like the uh, Camille, uh, Camellia, yeah, kidney beans. Those are also a little smaller than some of the kidney beans is that you can do these in the slow cooker. So with kidney beans, there's a toxin. And so it has to be heated up to a boil for about 10 minutes. So they find that doing that in the slow cooker is not okay. So you can cook it for 10 minutes and then finish it in the slow cooker. This way with these guys, you can just go for it. And these are runner beans. And we talked, someone brought runner beans up the other night. And these, again, let's go back down. I think you see, see all this clearer. And see, this is, the Rancho Gordo has a special project with some farmers as well. So in the bean club, sometimes you do get beans you can't necessarily buy anywhere else. And so what I love, and you guys can see this, and so there's in the scarlet runner beans are black with red. There's black runner beans. And then these I have not actually had yet. 
but they get big, pretty big, and they have this really thin skin with a real meaty, creamy bean in there. So they work amazing as a protein substitute. And in the bean book, I even do um, kind of a Thai soup with them, and it's just really yummy. It really ups the heartiness of that dish a lot. And so that's something else. And there's this is not all that was in the third quarter box. This is all that's left in the third quarter box. I got some um, Mayakoba beans that I'm, I've used. I can't tell you what I've used them for. It's a surprise. Um, but those on plantbasedinstantpot.com, I love my coba beans as a refried bean. They're a light, delicate yellow bean. And so I season them a little bit differently too. I use a little more Mexican oregano. I don't use the cumin that's traditionally in there and it makes this amazing amazing bean. Um, Mayakoba beans on Amazon skew expensive. They skew cheap at the Hispanic market. So again, that's one reason why I want to encourage you to support your local businesses too, as much as you can. And Steve and Rancho Gordo is actually a small local business out of California. So we, we he needs our help too. And, um, Brandy said she would have ripped into it and not waited as long as me. And Brandy loves the bean book. And Brenda from um, Gilbert, Arizona, just learned about me this week and has been viewing my YouTube videos. This is my first live. Yay, welcome. Actually, welcome, Brenda. I'm so glad you're here. And if you have some questions, this is going to be just kind of a general information session. But if you have some questions as you guys are go as we're going along, just throw them out there. I love questions. It makes me feel like I'm on my very own game show. And you know what? I got to live where I can live, right? <laughs> so these are garbanzo beans. These are just going to be really fresh. So sometimes in the bean club, you get unusual beans and sometimes you get normal ones. Like remember I had pentos I think I had out of here too. These are those giant, giant beans that sometimes you will um, see in Greek food. Let's see what, um, I'm going to give you, read your, I like to read Steve's descriptions. A big, fat, super creamy white runner bean that's even bigger when cooked. Use in salad soups or just drizzle cooked beans with your best olive oil. Vegan Parmesan cheese, I'll interject, salt and pepper. So, a lot of times he'll cook beans very simply. He does, he's not vegan and he's certainly not oil free, but we'll talk about that when we look at these, um, the newsletter that comes in, it has recipes. So I'm going to give you a little insight into how I might veganize it and maybe give you some oil free options and how you could do it too. So that hopefully in your kind of vegan reservoir, it, you just have some more ideas. Now here's the thing that made me squeal and I did not see this until today. There is a, A, it's a little book, but it's got like, it's a tasting um, heirloom bean passport for the bean, the name, Latin name, tasting notes and recipes. And my goodness, these are stickers. My inner 10 year old is just like about to jump out of her little mind. <laughs> and these are just so beautiful. Um, so I don't know about you guys, but if you're loving some beans, like this is just awesome. And I, this, of all the things it's not, I'm not worried that I didn't open up the beans. I'm like, oh, I could have used this before today. And so these are the kind of cute things you get. And there was also some, um, sometimes they're some different seasonings too. And this time it was smoked paprika. And I wish again, as I do many times, that there's smell of vision because this is some smoky goodness. So I'm digging it. I've also gotten some of the Mexican oregano. I'm hoping we'll get some more of that soon. I'm not out, but um, those are really nice things to, to get too. If you are not in the bean club, you can go to ranchogordo.com and you can buy things, whatever things may be in stock or not. So, and this is what the newsletter, this is the third quarter newsletter. 
So you get, it's really kind of cute. It's like a little newspaper. I'll let you guys see it up close too. And see, it tells you what third quarter was, gives you a little quote, Tom Waits. Of course, I love you, Steve. I love Tom Waits too. So I'll give you, I'll give you like the, the quote is, when you're down on your luck and you've lost all your dreams, there's nothing like a campfire and a can of beans. And you know, I think that's a good quote for 2020, to find a little happiness wherever we can. But he gives us a little introduction. He talks about each bean individually, like um, the Achote Amarillo. And I'm sure I'm butchering that. So please, Spanish speaking people, please forgive me. I'm trying hard. Um, and it was one of, actually these beans, which I call runner beans, was one of the first cultivated crops of the New World. They were all, they were grown all over Central and Northern Mexico, but seemed to have lost favor with Mexicans except in specific indigenous communities. So he just gives all kinds of good information. And then there's a recipe and a savory tomato sauce. There's recipes all over the back, plus information. The Mayacoba he, beans, he actually... Ch he roasts poblano peppers, onion, and then puts the refried beans with some cheese on a baguette, which sounds pretty awesome. And he does in New Orleans red beans and rice. Of course, he's using andouille sausage. You could, as a vegan, then go do tofur tofurkey has an andouille sausage. And in fact, one of my books, I think it's the ultimate vegan cookbook in your instant pot, with the ulti for your instant pot. I believe I make a homemade seitan and dewy sausage. So that's something else you could use in there. And a lot of times they're going to use oil to saute onions and garlic normally in a recipe. And if you're SOS or sugar, salt, and oil free, all you have to do is put a little water in there and that works fine or have a nice, safe, nonstick pan that you could use and you could do it that way as well. So that's just a tidbit. This is the real opening. And Brittany says, that is the quote for 2020. So simple yet satisfying. The beans, she says, not the year. But I love that you know this is your Rancho Gordo box. They know you've been waiting. And they've been putting in a piece of Rancho Gordo, like paper. So people have been doing different things with the little paper that it comes with. But it's really cute. Okay, and so this is our little newsletter. And we'll look at that in a minute. Um, yeah, I'm not going to put that on camera because there is a, a code. There's not usually a code on those for, for shipping. Okay, we'll take a look at this in a minute. I'm pretty sure this is my yearly calendar. Okay, we've got super lucky 2021 black beans. And if you're looking for a recipe for black beans in your Instant Pot, I've got it for you. It, just look up black beans on plantbasedinstantpot.com. It's one of the most popular recipes there. But you want to make them in your slow cooker? Is that what I hear? Healthyslowcooking.com. I've got your slow cooker recipe too. So we're all set. You guys know, right, that you're supposed to eat black eyed peas for luck on New Year's Day. So let's all get with the plan. I don't think everybody ate their black eyed peas last year. So we need to do it this year. Um, when you're going to the grocery store, usually around the end of December, you start seeing some fresh black eyed peas, which are, not ex they're sort of fresh and you can cook those or you can cook from dried or you can use canned really. It's all up to you. So I, I have no judgments on how you eat your black eyed peas. I just want you to promise me that you will eat them even if you don't like them. Okay. That's all I'm asking for Christmas this year. Okay, so that's one. Let's see. We've got some cassoulet beans. And I actually, let me see if I can find it. I can't remember if we made a picture of the, I did a, a cassoulet in the Great Vegan Bean Book. I don't think we did a picture for that one. But usually a cassoulet is something that has like, hunter stuff like duck and venison and things like that. But what I would encourage you to do when you see a recipe like that, 
So you want to go darker, so maybe mushrooms. Add more umami. Maybe have some soy sauce, some tamari, a little miso in there. Something like that. So if you're looking to kind of take this what might be traditionally a meaty recipe and change it over, like beef stew that I grew up on, it's basically potatoes, carrots, and beef. And we can easily make that with potatoes, carrots, and mushrooms. Either cut mush mushroom, button mushrooms like in halves or quarters and cook that along maybe a little bit of red wine, maybe some rosemary. If you got some juniper berries, throw that in or a little balsamic. Something to make it kind of feel heavier and more hearty, if that helps. Um, and Jackie says, black eyed peas, collard greens, and rice for me on New Year's Day. Excellent, excellent. I'm gonna to want to hear you all report back. Even my friend, Faith, who does not like black eyed peas at all, will eat black eyed, my black eyed peas. And so also, I think it's on Healthy Slow Cooking. I have, so you make your black eyed peas one day, then you have some leftovers. And so I made a black eyed pea pate, which uses some pecans and makes this rich spread that's really, really delicious. And pecans is another nut that I find that kind of takes that darker, darker flavor, heavier flavor. And so to contrast, a, what I would say a lighter flavor would be lemon zest, lemon juice, something bright and a little bit acidic, if that makes sense, if you're looking at it that way a little bit. Okay, so you could use that in a cassoulet recipe. Now, I don't know the, okay, here, I'll do the beans I know and then we'll read about the others. I love Rancho Gordo's Midnight Black Beans. They are just really tasty. And here's one of the things about getting in the Rancho Gordo Bean Club is the beans are very, very fresh. And I do like that a lot. So I've never had any issues cooking them at all. There we go. I'm looking at it. And Fran says, where in your bean book could I find the cassoulet recipe? I don't know. Let's see if the index is any good. I didn't write the index, by the way. You know, I'll have, I don't know. Oh, here we go. Something intervened. It's on page 145 in the Great Vegan Bean Book. So, and it's actually using um, the little green-ish hint cassoulet beans. But you could really use this with anything. And you can go and find a meaty cassoulet recipe and kind of change it and veganize it too. Yeah. It's in the, what did I say, page 140-something? Yeah, it's in the Great Vegan Bean Book, page 145. But I don't have all the, I have 10 traditionally published books, and I'm not allowed to put all those recipes up on the site. So there will always be some that just can't be there for contractual reasons. Oh yeah, and Jackie says her leftover black eyed peas become cakes and burger style dinners. Love that. Um, okay, and Fran got it. And Gina said, do you have a black eyed pea and collard recipe? I've got kind of a few and I'd have to look through all the books because I don't have, I'm pretty sure I have one in vegan slow cooking for two. Ten, these are what I've written over 10 years, so it's really hard for me sometimes to separate them out into little pieces, but I probably have something in most of my books. And um, I don't know if I have exactly a black eyed pea and collard recipe on the blogs together, but I'll go check. And if not, I probably can do the soup recipe and try and get it up before New Year's too. Um, okay. Cranberry beans, sometimes known as borlotti beans. And these are really good, like in a minestrone. Um, they can also be used as refried beans. You know, like instead of pinto beans, you could use these. Typically, we don't because cranberry beans cost more. I noticed for a while that Kroger was having 
their cranberry beans a little bit cheaper. So if you can find a generic brand, they're going to be a little less expensive. But um, these are really, really good for sure. Soup stews. All right. Now, I don't know the Desi chai, chana. So chana is just like baby chickpeas, kind of. And so this is a thick, rich, thick skin type of chickpea, also known as, oh, it's kala, kala chana. I did not recognize it because I was thinking it was going to be something else. And they're good in Indian recipes, stews, curries, and all types of salads. I'm pretty sure, I know I have a black um, chickpea recipe. I can't remember if it's in here, though. But I know I have one. I think it is actually in the Ultimate Vegan Cookbook for your Instant Pot. I think. But um, these you can get in Indian markets. And so, let's... Oh, here we go. This is a good one. I've got these regular chickpeas, so let's let you see these side by side. So see how much smaller they are? And these are just regular old chickpeas. And these are um, kalachana, or black. And they, you can also get green ones is another um, thing that I've seen. Now these, I don't know, so I'm actually going to keep this here instead of reading upside down and backwards. This is bio chocolate, bio chocolate, and it's um, actually, it doesn't say a lot, so hopefully that will tell me more. And it's from one of the, the projects of working with farmers. And these look really interesting. They do look like little bits of chocolate. Okay, I'm gonna unbox the last thing and then we'll come back and look at some more fun facts about these beans because we've got popping corn. Look, look how pretty that is. It's like rubies. Yeah, I know. Cheryl's like super happy. I don't know if you can hear her or not. Let me try and straighten these up a little bit more. So I love Rancho Gordo popcorn and so does Dawn, my friend. But let's see, we've got, I always get a calendar. Let's see what we got. Yeah, a big, Rancho Gordo calendar. And it's usually like kind of in an old style painting like that. <laughs> Cheryl says, <laughs> I don't know if you heard that. Cheryl says, it's usually in my cubicle at work. Cheryl's been working at home a lot uh, most of the time. But um, I think she's had people fight over this too. Um, so it's just really cool. And every year, you know, it used to be growing up every year, like your insurance salesman would give you a calendar and this person would give you a calendar. But for me, it's always been Rancho Gordo. So let's learn a little more about these beans. So I can show you this here if I have my hand ac across it. So this is very um, similar, except there's a code I don't want to be given out on the internet. Okay, so there's no quote this time, but I want to look at these bayo beans, which are the, the kind of look like little chocolate drops, because I've never seen these before. They're dense and meaty while exuding, exuding a really rich, complex bean broth when cooked with a little onion, garlic, and olive oil. The beans themselves are very mild, but this means you can use them in all sorts of cuisines. Because they're dense and stay whole after cooking, Unlike pintos wood or something like that, they make an ideal salad bean. Hint, dress them up with your vinaigrette while they're still warm to soak up all the flavor. That sounds really good. We occasionally get asked for kidney beans, which is a pretty generic term, but we interpret this as needing a bean that holds its shape and a dense texture. Commodity kidney beans aren't so interesting, but virtually any recipe that calls for a kidney bean would benefit from the addition of the bio chocolate instead. And so for the record, the term chocolate refers to what they look like and not the flavor. And so there's like this really great bean um, soup with some uh, Mexican oregano, these beans, some vegetable broth, and some tomatoes. That sounds like a really delicious way to make them. And, and Gina said, did you, oh, I think I already answered that. Okay, cool.
I want to make sure. And do you guys have some questions about any of these beans or maybe the Rancho Gordo Bean Club? I gave you a link to Rancho Gordo. It is not an affiliate link. Okay, so I just really love the beans. I love what he does. It's a small San Francisco company and I just want to see him prosper and do well. And he actually, when I did the Great Vegan Bean Book, it was only my second book. I actually reached out to him. He didn't know who I was at all. And I said, hey, if I create a big postcard and put a, one of the recipes from the Bean Book on there and brand it Rancho Gordo, will you let me send you some cards to put in your orders? He's like, yeah, just don't send more than a thousand. I was like, woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> you know, because it was like the bean guy, the bean guy is letting me put my, you know, my recipes around. And I've actually had a recipe or two in one of, um, one of Rancho Gordo's cookbooks. And, and they're just wonderful, a wonderful company is how I feel. Hi, Belinda. Welcome. It's glad to have you here at the live and Susan. So you've kind of missed the main unboxing, but let's, let's let you take a little look here. So this is what all was in the box, plus a cool calendar this, this time. And this was the fourth quarter box. And I'm sorry, let's see if I can, there we go. Um, we got midnight black beans, some cassoulet beans. Of course we got black eyed peas because Steve would like us all to have good luck. Some cranberry beans, some black um, chana. And again, for those of you who just came in, these, this is some regular chickpeas. And if you see them, actually, you're not going to see them that way. There we go. So see, the regular chickpeas are much larger. These are like little baby chickpeas. And they're used a lot in Indian food. And this is a bean I've never seen before that looks like little chocolate drops. And um, from reading what Steve wrote for us, it has a thick skin, so they hold together well, which is, means they'd be really good um, meat substitute, really, and some other things. And this beautiful red stuff is popping corn, which is pretty, pretty amazing. Um, so someone is asking for basic cooking for beans, stovetop, oven, or instant pot. So in general, if you're doing dried beans, unless they are lentils or split peas, I soak them. Um, in the Instant Pot, you can just cook them longer instead of soaking them. They're probably going to burst more. Um, so soaking them gives them more time to expand so the skin can kind of expand with it. And again, that can change from how old the beans are. And this is, this is when people are asking me for cooking times and things like that. So beans themselves are the variable. In general, Rancho Gordo beans are some of the freshest beans you're going to get. So they get them from the farmer, they package them up, and then I get my quarterly shipment. But the beans that are in Kroger's, we don't know how long they've been on the shelf. We don't know how long they were at the warehouse. We don't know any of that stuff. So some beans, you may cook pinto beans one time and cook them a second time and they take twice as long. So just know, no matter what cooking method you're using, you may have to go and check. I always check the beans if you've been in any of my classes. So by I put a couple of beans onto um, on a spoon, take the other spoon and kind of do this. So if they the bean splits in half, that means it's probably still too hard unless it's like a chickpea. But usually that means it's not cooked enough and you're going to have troubles, digestive troubles. So you want it to be smooth on the inside. And that's how I always check them. Um, and you can cook them. So if, if you're going to soak them, you can, you can still cook them on the Instant Pot, in the slow cooker, on top of the stove, or in the stove in a duf, Dutch oven. I've done them all those ways. Um, if, if you look up on the web or if you have one of my Instant Pot cookbooks, it gives you different cooking times for soaked beans versus non-soaked beans. Uh, and, it, and again, the beans are the variable. So I've gotten people very angry. Well, I cooked them for 10 minutes and they weren't done, or I cooked them for 15 minutes. Well, I, I can't change the way your beans are. So just know that sometimes that can be a variable. But um, 
Typically, by soaking your beans overnight and draining them, A, it, it can help your digestion if you already have some issues with adding all that extra fiber from beans. And it also cuts down on the cooking time. So it's kind of a win-win all the way around. Now, if you wanted to make beans tonight and you don't have any soaked beans, you can quick soak those beans. You can either put them in the Instant Pot, cover them with water, um, cook them for like five to eight minutes, manually release the pressure, strain them, rinse them, and then cook as you would do soaked beans. Same thing, you can do the same thing on the stovetop. You put your beans, cover them with water, bring it to a boil, let them sit for about 10 to 15 minutes, then continue on as if they were soaked. Depending on your personal digestive system, that may be enough, it may not be enough. So only you will know that. Um, but slow cooking beans too, like <clears throat> sometimes what I will do is like maybe tonight I'll put a pound of dry beans in with extra water, put it on low, cook them all night. Then I'll wake up in the morning. I'll go ahead and strain the water out, rinse them, put them back in and then cook them the rest of the day. So I've done that as well. So that's kind of like extra soaking, you know, cause the warm water makes it a little bit softer. I make a lot of creamy beans, like New Orleans beans, um, like white creamy beans, creamy Southern pinto beans. So it's almost like, almost like a refried bean, but not quite. So I'm okay with, I, I don't mind beans getting a little more mushy. So if you want your beans to be like they came out of a can, kind of crisp, you're probably gonna get better results with your Instant Pot just knowing that sometimes the beans are the variable. Okay. And let's see what we got here. Jackie said she hopes to be in the bean club one of these days. I've been on the waiting list a while. Fingers crossed for you. And someone says, Steve of Rancho Gordo always talks about oil when cooking beans. Okay to skip the oil. Absolutely. So those of you who know me and have been watching me for any length of time know my thing is let's be inclusive. So sometimes I'll use a little bit of oil, but most of the time I don't cook with oil. But not cooking with oil isn't going to kill whatever you're trying to do. So like we were talking about another recipe and there was some oil in there, you could just water saute your onions instead. Um, when I'm making Indian food, a lot of times everything's kind of, you've got some oil, you're cooking your whole spices, but you can toast those whole spices. It's not the traditional way to do it. And it may not taste exactly the same. But here's the thing, if you're cutting out oil, chances are it's because your doctor told you to or you're doing it for a health reason. And your health is way more important than something tasting a tad different, right? So of course, and even when I'm doing something, there's, there's sometimes that I will have certain ways that I've done it before. And I may not know exactly the substitution right then. Like I'm, I'm still trying to figure out one for Maryland. Um, but we'll work it out. But certainly just normal things like you can leave the oil out for sure. Just you're, you may have to substitute something else in there depending if it's, is it part of the flavor? Um, if it is, then maybe we need to up the spices or herbs a little bit more, something like that. Um, and Belinda says, I have your great vegan bean book. It helped me so much to learn how to love beans without meat when I made that transition. Oh, that just, that just makes me feel so happy. Thank you so very, very much for that. I, because I write the cookbooks because I really do hope it helps people in their transition and that they can see that you have those options. So that means a lot to me. Um, and someone said, do you always drain the first soaking water? Yes, absolutely. So like what we're doing is we're kind of trying to break down and get rid of a protein that our bodies typically don't do well. So like, I will also say this, there are two camps. There's soak your beans and don't soak your beans. And I don't care which one you do. <laughs> it's your body, your body knows. So Steve is more of, of don't soak your beans. Don't get rid of that flavor, which I think is fine too. And I also, there are times that I don't soak my beans. 
but if your body is having trouble digesting some fibers, if you're finding that your tummy hurts, you got a really a lot more gas than you were expecting from those beans, then you should soak and rinse them. So when we're soaking them and getting rid of the rin rinsing water, that helps get rid of some of that stuff we don't want to digest. So that's why we always get rid of the soaking water and rinse them and then put them back in something. Even if we're doing quick soaks, I always do that. Um, and Gina says she's made herself eat beans since going plant-based. I'm so sorry. Um, and if you can tell me a little bit about what it is you don't like, I might be able to like veer you towards a recipe maybe. And I'd be happy to do that. Um, do you guys have any other questions? So what we did is we, un we unboxed um, the Rancho Gordo Bean Club quarter four with my super lucky 2021 black eyed peas and i'm counting on these guys and i'm counting on you to eat your black eyed peas on new year's day even if you don't like them just take a spoonful it do it for all of us to have a little bit more luck in 2021 um, oh and jackie says she soaks her beans with a little baking soda then rinses them and either adds um wakame or bay leaves to help with digestion and gas and it's true and each culture has something that they put in beans to help help do that from seaweed to bay leaves to epizote um you know there's so each culture has different things that help with the digestion of beans for sure and gina thinks it's the texture but she does enjoy them more as time goes by and I can even, <sighs> texture is hard because like Cheryl is a texture eater. So I end up having to do some things with her, but like making things into spreads and pâtés is a really great way to start. Like actually, oh, right to it. This almond cheese spread, it's my faux goat cheese spread. It's like really easy. And I don't know if it's on one of my sites, but and I don't know if you can... I think that it's not probably good enough for you to read it. But basically, I'll read it off really quick. It's one and a half cups of cooked white beans. So that could be cannellini, it could be navy beans, it could be a can of beans. A can is about one and a half cups of beans. So if I did this, I'd, I'd take, open the can of beans, put it in a, a strainer, and rinse them off. That rinses off any additional salt, so it lowers the salt content. And, but you can also save that water and use it for aquafaba for other things because you're probably not buying beans with salt in them. But just so you have the whole thing. This one uses a cup of like those skinned almonds that are in little slivers. You can get them at Trader Joe's. And then I use some macadamia, macadamia nuts, a quarter cup, enough non-dairy, unsweetened plain non-dairy milk so that we're gonna puree this. It's got some lemon juice nutritional yeast, apple cider vinegar, and salt and pepper. So it doesn't sound like much, but it's the tang you get from the lemon juice and the apple cider vinegar that kind of gives you a little bit of what the tang would be in a goat cheese. And it's a super easy, nice holiday spread. Um, and you can put it on crackers or sandwiches or just celery and carrots. You could make this and you could leave out the nuts. It just wouldn't be as rich and that's okay too there's sometimes you know you could take you can make hummus into anything which means you can make pureed beans into anything it's about the flavors that you put in and if you're using something um, I'm trying to think what else we could do just I make lots of different bean spreads like that and I want you to know that if there's something if, if you're not really keen on the texture, if you up the flavor, sometimes that can help too. Let's see what we have. Um, Marilyn says she always has black eyed peas and cabbage on New Year's and see it's, she's in Louisiana. I'm surprised it's not collards there, but it's, it's um, collards that we eat for money. Um, so that's kind of awesome too. So if you guys want to eat some collards and cabbage, I can be on board with that. Um, 
And Jesse says it is a Southern tradition. Uncertain Voyage says what makes it lucky to eat black eyed peas. It's just a, it's a tradition. So we're told as we grow up in the South that if you don't eat your black eyed peas, you're not going to have luck for the year. If you don't eat collard greens, you're not going to have money. I don't know where the superstitions come from. Um, Can you guys hear me now? Can you hear? Yeah, I think I leaned on something. Yeah, I'm not sure where I was and all that. I was having this big old monologue. Um, okay, BC can hear now. Okay, great. Awesome. Can anyone remind me when the sound went off? Um, I think I, what happened is I have it here and I leaned over and I think it got the button. And so Jesse says, I don't know why or how, but black eyed peas at New Year's with collard greens and cornbread is supposed to bring money and good luck in finance. Yeah, and that's exact. I was saying that. So hopefully you guys heard some of that. So, um, but I was telling you about my New Year's dinner. So I usually make cornbread like with some um, peppers. It could be like, poblano peppers, or it could be just like chopped up tri-colored pepper from the freezers and Trader Joe's, you know, or whatever you have. You, you could just have plain cornbread. There's nothing wrong with plain cornbread either. And um, some black eyed peas with some Cajun seasoning, make some rice with, um, with a little bit of gravy. So you could either make like a mushroom gravy. So I've been making a creamy gravy and I'll probably post this up on the YouTube channel soon. It's actually on the Plant-Based Network. They're playing a show for me over there. So if you ever want to go, go to plantbasednetwork.com. At the top, it goes watch, and it'll take you to another page. And if you scroll way down, you'll start seeing the cooking videos. So I've got a couple on there. And one is for air fried holiday tofu and gravy. And so in that gravy, what I do is I toast some oat flour and you're making it kind of like you're making a roux, but without oil. So you're just toasting the oat flour. You'll smell that it starts to smell nutty. And then you're going to add some poultry seasoning, add some nutritional yeast. You could add a salt substitute if you want, or salt and pepper. And um, I just use filtered water because I want a creamy, um, like golden gravy, not like a, a milk gravy per se. You can put that over your rice. And then you can have some collards, have some green beans, and maybe some um, sweet potatoes. You got to have some sweet potatoes on New Year's too. And then you could, or you could even make a sweet potato pie or a sweet potato pudding if you don't want to deal with that crust. Okay, good. All right, you guys. Do you have any other questions or answers? Do you want to tell me what you're having for New Year's? Or you just maybe we're just starting to think about it. I know there's some holidays between now and New Year's. Um, I'm not sure what time I'm going to be going live next week. 
but at least one day Wednesday. Okay, this is annoying. Oh, it's the battery. Well, I'm about to go. No, the battery. It was the battery. Okay, so maybe the first time it was the batteries and then they just gave me a little bit of um. So sorry about that, you guys. So, and now I, thanks Gina for asking me when I'm going on next week because now I know when I stop. So next week it's going to vary. So there's going to be some times I'm going to go during the day um, because I was talking about the holiday lights that I'm going to go see on Wednesday. So on Wednesday, I know I'm going to try and go probably in the afternoon. Um, I'm figuring, because I'm just kind of deciding what I'm going to do the day I'm doing it. So and next Saturday, I will not be going live for sure, because I'm teaching a class. You guys are always welcome to join in on the classes. It's kathyhester.podia.com. My classes are $35 each, or you can join Kathy's Cooking Club and it's a recurring membership, but you can cancel it yourself in your thing before it renews. And you get two classes a month for $50. Because of the pandemic, I've done some different coupon codes for things where there'll be a December bundle where there wasn't before. And depending on what you can pay, you can pay the normal price of the bundle is 60 for two classes. So you get $5 off each class, but there's a coupon code where you can pay 50, 25 or 10 depending on what your financial situation is. And if you go to either um, Healthy Slow Cooking Facebook page, Plant-Based Instant Pot Facebook page, or join my group Vegan Recipes Cooking with Kathy Hester, which is free on Facebook group, um, you can see those codes. There's a lot, it's too much for me to read out to you. If you just don't do Facebook and you really want a code, there's some on YouTube, but I didn't put it on every single Thing the past week. Um, so Gina, the, the answer is the non-answer of I'm not sure. I'm, I think tomorrow, let's see what I got tomorrow. Tomorrow it'll probably be dinner time I'm thinking. But what I'll do is I've been putting it live through Restream, so that way you, I have to put it in an hour before I go live, so you'll always have an hour at least. Um, and so I'll, it's hard to do a schedule because I'm actually juggling a whole bunch of things, and what it comes down to sometimes is maybe I'll bring you along while I make lunch or dinner. <laughs> you, you almost had a soup that you were going to watch me make today, but, um, but we ate it, and I made it anyhow. But I also have some mushrooms dehydrating behind me, and I'm thinking of making kind of umami sprinkle blend. So I might do that tomorrow, or I could wake up and go, I'm making pancakes. I have no idea what I'm gonna do tomorrow. Um, okay, and Marilyn says, you're getting a good workout with all the things that can go wrong with your everyday blog month. Uh, you're very successful through anything that happens. You're very sweet. Um, 
I don't get shaken by a lot of the things because we're, we're changing equipment. And even tonight, we've got two new lights. We switched out two new lights. And I'm really digging these new lights. And we're trying to be like the cool kids. They Because I'm doing Vlogmas. And actually, this is Vlogmas Day, what, 13? Vlogmas Day 13! Yay! And so there are a lot of vloggers or video bloggers or people who are YouTubers. And I'm getting a lot of great information, so I'm trying some different things. And Cheryl is upgrading my equipment, which is both good and horrible. Because whenever we upgrade, so with Restream, that was a learning curve, and we had to make some adjustments because our stream was not doing well. It wasn't looking good. Um, and what was it? It was just this week, this past week, my old microphone like this died. Like, I had literally been using it gone on a live and it was just static so it's exciting um but that's about i think that's all i have to say for tonight except that i hope you guys are being really good to yourselves take some time out tonight have a nice warm drink relax read your favorite book watch a funny show and just kind of enjoy yourself really just relax and enjoy yourself that's all i want for you today and um if you have some other questions let me know and i'll talk to you guys tomorrow so bye